there are just two weeks before Iraqi voters go to the polls. Because of the violence, the interim government has canceled the elections in the province known as the Triangle of Death. When Colonel Smith announced that in a staff meeting, uh, you could literally hear the wind go out of the sails of the Marines and, and the officers. We've lost uh, some individuals. They've given their lives for this. We cannot let this happen. It's pretty upsetting because everybody had worked so hard to make this possible, put in all, all the blood, sweat, and tears. Colonels Ron Johnson and Mark Smith go to Baghdad hoping to change the government's decision. We were able to show that we had control of the area of operation, not the criminals insurgents. We did receive approval to conduct elections. The caveat was we would have to establish the polling sites. We looked for schools, both in the town itself and in the surrounding countryside, to identify the best locations. It was happening. You could feel it. We had the momentum. Finally, some three months after the Marines arrived in the Triangle of Death, Election Day comes. It was a beautiful day. You know, the sun came up, crisp blue skies. We didn't know what to expect. We thought the insurgents were going to come out in force and do everything they could to disrupt the Marines. Based on intelligence reports, they're especially concerned about suicide bombers driving into the crowds at several of the polls. The decision to stop all vehicular traffic completely eliminated that threat. We closed the roads down, so everyone walked to the polling center. If we could just get one person to come out the vault, it would have been a victory. Then, just before the polls are about to open, We're starting to take rockets and mortars at all our polling sites, coinciding exactly with the announced time that they would be open. We got shelled more than 31 times that day. Despite those attacks, Iraqis were walking the vote in the midst of a mortar and rocket attacks. We would pass columns of civilians walking, smiling, laughing, joking, ecstatic that they, that they got to vote for the first time. Then started coming in the reports from the company commanders, basically saying, sir, we're taking mortar fire, and we've got about 2,000 people standing in line to vote, and we can't get them to leave. What do we do? And I said, let them vote. On this momentous day, apparently nothing will keep the voters from coming. You can really see the excitement of the, the Iraqi civilians as they held up that finger with the indelible ink marks showing that they had, that they had voted. It, it was a phenomenal day. There was a young Iraqi man that was pushing an elderly Iraqi man in a shopping cart. Uh, because you couldn't use your vehicles that day. They were restricted by the Iraqi government. And when the Marines asked him, you know, why, why are you coming up here under mortar fire? His response to them in broken English was that, thanks to them, his, his father's only wish was that he would vote one time in his life as a free man. Every Iraqi house would by is having a feast on uh, the 4th of July celebration. They were hugging each other, they were kissing each other. Despite all the violence and terrorist tactics, Iraq's first free elections are finally realized. <laughs>